Good afternoon, Democrats. I am so excited to be here with you this afternoon. Uh, you know, I was listening to the speeches, and the common thread is this. We are here because we believe in something bigger than ourselves. We are not here because we want a lower capital gains tax. We are not here because we think that we are being treated unfairly by our government. Well, some of us do a little bit sometimes. But we are here because we have a vision of a country in which the American dream is still possible, in which everyone who qualifies can have a higher education, in which K-12 in California is the best it is any place in this country, in which health care is something that is available to all. And that, those are the reasons we are here today. For me, this week, the health care thing is really personal because thanks to Medicare, my father came through 12 hours of open heart surgery on Monday. Amazing, amazing. Thanks to Medicare. And I know that there are people who are here because they believe that the most important thing we have to do right now is to get off our addiction to foreign oil and set up an energy system that is good for human beings and for the economy, and we can do that. There are people who are here today because they believe in peace, and they believe that the $10 billion that we spend in Afghanistan every month will be far better spent on things like Medicare and education. But no matter what it is, the particular thing that brings you here, you are here because you believe in change. And in the Democratic Party, change is our constant. At the beginning of this country, you could not vote unless you were white, male, and in most states, you had to own 50 acres. Anybody out there qualified? So it was a big change just to move towards a system of voting in which every citizen could cast a ballot. And we still fight because there are still places, still states, where there are barriers thrown up that are intended to interfere with the right of United States citizens to cast a ballot and to have that ballot counted exactly as it was cast. So we continue to fight that battle. And we have made incredible change in the last 20 years. You know, I was thinking just as I came here today, uh, I had a, an important political discussion in the ladies' room. That would not have happened 20 years ago. And I was thinking about uh, my first term in the state assembly, in which I carried a bill that uh, said that we would put all of the information about bills and voting records online so that anybody who was interested could have access. And I had a state senator, I won't tell you his name, and it was almost all hymns, uh, say to me, uh, Assemblywoman Bowen, no one will use that. And I said to him, sir, uh, with all due respect, it is not for you, it's for the kids who are in second grade now. How many of you were in elementary school in the 90s? How many young people have, do we have? Look at this. Are you using the internet? You are fabulous. So uh, you, we've got kids in second grade now who are a decade away from being voters. And I don't know what tools they will need, but I do know that we need to teach them to be citizens. And as Secretary of State, I have made it a huge priority to expand the high school mock election program. We went from having 250,000 kids vote to approaching three quarters of a million high school students vote in the mock election. And we don't just do the mock election in a general now, we do it in the primary too. My goal is for every high school student to have four opportunities to participate in a mock election before they graduate and to not only understand the mechanics of voting, 
but to be able to think critically about candidates and issues and evaluate for themselves what it is that they're going to vote on. If we can accomplish that, change will take care of itself because we are the agents of change. The tools have changed a little, but I still have with me right here on this podium some of the major tools. Here's one of them. It's a clipboard. A pen. And this one, I looked at it. It's from the Avid Reader, an independent bookstore. And we still believe as Democrats in the power of small business and in the creativity of human beings to create something unique and special. And the other tools that I have with me, the weapons of choice now for democracy, and we have seen this all over the world. Here they are. No bullets here, just a communicator. Various kinds, but imagine what's happening in the Middle East right now and what would have happened without the simple ability to take film on a, on a cell phone of something that was happening and broadcast it to the world. No longer can all of those abuses happen in private with no one knowing. And that is such a critical step towards democracy. So I'm here today as a Democrat by choice, not by birth. I have chosen to be a Democrat. This is my party and I am proud to be a part of it because I believe in the values that we share as Democrats and our belief that we can change things and that we are not stuck in the Leave it to Beaver world where a high school student in Illinois was not allowed to take a drafting class. And yes, I would have been an engineer if I had been a boy. But you know what? It turned out pretty well, I think. And I'm grateful to be able to put those skills to use as your Secretary of State. Have a wonderful convention. I will look for you in the halls. The best is yet to come. Let's keep that change rolling, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.